So in our last community update, we talked about this. This is Hue Forge. It is a program that turns a color image into a hype mapped STL where simple filament swaps can enable you to create full color 3D prints. Now, color swaps are nothing new. They're really cool, actually. And you can do this with lots of printers. And if you can't do it with your printer, then it could be possible to edit the firmware and allow a pause feature and the all important M600 command. You can set your slicer to pause the print wherever. Lots of slicers have this option. Cura has a plugin for it. Pusher Slicer has a very easy to use interface for it. The printer will print a color up to a certain layer. It will then pause, move the print head to the side. It's called parking. And you can then take the filament out, put a new color in and resume. We've made some pretty cool things with this. So take a look at this maker badge that we did and also this Nyan cat that we did. We showed these in the last video, by the way. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of printers just don't come with this and you have to enable it with new Marlin firmware or whatever. But if you have Clipper, you can do it via the CFG. But if you are interested in updating your firmware to Marlin firmware, we did a guide on this and it explains how to do the M600 command and parking the printhead as well. You can find it right here. You might notice with these examples that they are kind of thick. So this is because thin layers can be a bit translucent. So I wanted a strong, clear, expressive color and it was only possible by adding several layers. So the color from the previous layer did not bleed through. Anyway, to create these models, I needed to use Photoshop to select the right color. I'd export that separately and then I'd turn that into an SVG file. I'd import the SVG file into Blender, turn the curve into a mesh, and I do this for all of the images, and I'd stack them on top of each other and create a one complete STL. And then I'd import that STL into um, a slicer with Cura or Prusa Slicer. And then I do the whole M600 command thing. It's not difficult to do. It's just tedious. It takes a long time, especially if you have a complicated picture with lots of colors. So this is where Hue Forge comes in. Uh, instead of all of that, I just imported an image into Hue Forge. I selected the filaments and that was it. That was probably faster. But the really cool thing about Hueforge is that it uses this disadvantage of the blending colors as an advantage. With these guys, I needed to pile up the colors so there was no bleed through. But Hueforge can use this to blend the colors so that you can have lots of colors, even if you're only using a few different spools of filament. You might think this is kind of like lithophanes and it sort of is, but it's more like a reverse lithophane. Um, you're not relying on light shining from behind it. Uh, you don't need a dedicated backlight source. You're looking at the light that's been reflected against the colors and back at your eyes. So you don't need a light source, which is great. So I was really interested in getting to know this, this program a little better. So I actually reached out to Steve, the creator of this, and I asked him to shed some light. Firstly, where did he come up with the idea? Hue Forge was originally made because I wanted to make color lithophanes and I didn't want to do the CMYK method because I don't have an AMS. Um, given that I don't have an AMS uh, or an MMU or any kind of filament swapper, uh, the 16 swaps was just too much for me. So I decided to go with uh, layer shifts, which I was, or layer changes, which I was really comfortable with because I've done a lot of bag tags for sports teams and things like that. So I started working on that after kind of accidentally getting some good ones and then trying without um, assistance to do others, and they all just came out not well. So I decided I have some uh, graphics experience, nothing real professional, but from college and on, uh, which was um, <clears throat> years ago. And um, so I decided to take my take my um, chance and look at that. Um, and I built eventually a tool that I creatively called the color color lithophane builder um, that would do exactly what Hueforge does, but with a backlight that I really realized that, whoa, this, this could be kind of big because it does a bunch of things that no one's really done um, in 3D printing that I was aware of. There's already a good amount of filaments loaded in the library when you install it. So we have Sunlu here, Eson, Polymaker, to name a few. Uh, but if you don't see yours, well, you can always just do some tests and figure out the transmission distance and add those to the library as well. It's not that hard. So there's a couple of ways to do it. And a lot of times I think people want, there is a, pretty reliable way that someone has come up with to use a, a lux sensor and um, set up a light and calibrated ranges and and get the, the values, but I didn't want to spend the money on it. Um, money was pretty tight. And also I didn't think that that was reasonable to ask everybody to spend $50, dollars on a light sensor to be able to make these. That was never going to sell. So I originally came up with test patterns like these. 
Um, you can see if I put the light behind it, that light goes through. Uh, and you can see my finger back here, light goes all the way through this one. So these are really good. These are probably the ideal method for filaments that are uh, less than four millimeters of transmissions or transmission distance, because you can get really close, be very, very reliable. You basically look for the first square that doesn't change color. And, um, but they take a long time to print. And they take, I mean, they don't take that much filament, but they take, mostly they take quite a while to print. Uh, and if you have a lot of filaments, you're going to go hours and hours and hours of print time to go through your filaments, which is why I came up with the filoscope, which is those little discs. I think I threw out all my discs. Yes, I throw my discs out. Um, uh, the filoscope, which has the little discs and you stack them, but it's a little bit more um, subjective. You have to, you're looking for the point where it's bright and then all of a sudden it dims suddenly. There's there's definitely like there's a curve, it comes down and then it it flattens out here and it takes forever to actually go to um, off, to, to no light. So what we want is that point where it stops being, it stops being uh, a, a downward line and it kind of tapers off. We want that corner. But if we're talking about greater color fidelity, what about CYMK colors? What if we can blend cyan, yellow, magenta, and black or white to get basically whatever color we want? Because I'm doing it by layer, this is going to be trickier to do with CMYK. You'd want a CMYK where each filament has the same transmission distance or a very similar transmission distance. Um, I assume that actually has to be the case for good CMY set, CMYK sets that people are using for backlit, but I haven't confirmed that. Um, and at some point I am planning on doing an, uh, an MMU, some MMU only or AMS only uh, features that would allow you to do something like this where uh, each color would be a nested model and they'd all nest together and then it would you'd color by model and and print cmyk which actually i'm sure that the that uh, uh jason Proust, who's who did the color um lithopane maker i'm sure he knows how to do that or could do that now while you can get really really lovely prints uh, you can still see the contours on each layer and uh, even if you're going down to layer heights of less than 0.1 millimeters, you can still see this. It's not really obvious, uh, but I would really like a seamless look to these. And I guess I sort of cheated and used a poly smooth filament uh, to smooth all of the layers together. And it looks really, really nice. Chemically smooth filaments do tend to gloss and sparkle a little bit. So that is kind of a downside if you want a more matte look. Uh, but after doing this, I think you would still benefit from actually doing a low layer height, as low as possible, basically, so that it does look quite seamless. You don't really need to use polysmooth filament or like ABS with acetone in order to achieve a really pretty effect. So we did notice that in HueForge, because it exports to such high detail with so many triangles, there are a lot of print direction changes. There's a lot of retraction, Z hops, travel moves. So because of this, there was a lot of stringing on our prints when it was complicated. We actually had to increase our retraction settings to something that was well above what you would have on a direct drive. So just something to watch out for when you're testing it. One downside to using HueForge's method is, I wouldn't call it a downside, but you do have to manually change the filament. So if you have an image that is quite complicated uh, with a lot of different colors, it can be a bit tedious and laborious to actually change the colors all the time. And if you have something that lasts like a day and a night, then yeah, that could take a while. So could you automate this with an MMU? Um, I did get a bamboo X1 carbon combo from Polymaker, I guess two weeks ago now. It's been pretty crazy. Um, and I have used it. I, as I said, I used I used it to make this. I mean, it's certainly easier. I, you don't have to sit there and swap filament. Uh, though on my printers over here that I, well, okay. my printers over here that I uh, have been using for years, it's a, a switch wire conversion of an under three and then a couple, a couple of core XYs, um, 300 by 300 core XYs. On those printers, I, you know, I swap filament, no problem. And they're set to wait and keep the bed hot uh, let, the, let the nozzle cool off, but keep the bed hot and the motors locked when they're idle, but paused. And um, so you don't have to be there at any particular time. I've seen people saying they're waking up at five in the morning or three in the morning to swap filament. And I think that's crazy. <laughs> I'm glad they like it, but don't don't stay up till don't wake up at three in the morning to swap filament. Fix your firmware. 
adjust your firmware so that it won't turn the bed off. I don't know about you guys, but I really, really loved using this program. Using the M600 command has always been so satisfying to create something like that on just one printer and even a really, really basic printer as well. And I really wish more printers would have this enabled in their firmware so basically anyone could use it without actually upgrading it because you can create beautiful things. This was the first color swap that I ever did. This is years old. It's our logo and uh, it's stupidly simple, but I had so much satisfaction from getting this done and actually doing this on one printer. Uh, I think this was actually done on an original CR10. Ugh. But now we have this really amazing tool, which makes things like this so, so simple. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens down the road. Uh, do I have plans for the future? Oh, I have a ton of plans for the future. Um. I want to do all kinds of things with this tool. Um, I want to make the service flat. I want to, that would be again, an MMU only, or I guess maybe a non-planar uh, process, but probably MMU only where you can make the top flat. And then I'll just basically sync all the color changes into the lower layers um, of the print. I want to be able to do things for non-MMU users where I either split the model into parts and you reassemble afterwards, but it's automatically split into parts. Uh, I want to do color more, much more color aware. I, I started the, this whole thing thinking, you know, the problem with lithophanes when you're doing with color is the traditional lithophane is just a negative height map um, that only cares about the brightness. And when we're doing color stuff, obviously we care about the color and i mean the, that's the that's like the number one first thing people ask for uh, in the discord is when are we gonna have color aware when are we gonna have color aware i can't and it'll probably come in stages there'll be a, a stage where you can pick a range of colors and say this should go up in the model and this should go down in the model um and like separate color ranges by color not by luminance uh and there'll be it'll get more um, complete by then i think we'll get more options on how we space them out in the color space where we say things like, oh, these two colors collide, do you care? And sometimes you won't, but if you do care, then you can say, you know, this one, this range goes up, this range goes down by color. So what do you guys think? Would you have any application for this at all? I am definitely impressed and I really want to get this going on something really big. So we have the Elegoo uh, Neptune 3 Max downstairs and I'd really like to hook up an MMU. I have a pallet somewhere around here and get that going with a massive, massive print. The only issue is that that printer is kind of slow. Uh, it just uses normal modified Marlin. And the other issue is that, yeah, the Hueforge tends to export files as quite large, like over a million triangles. And yeah, Steve did mention that we could decimate things in, in later uh, updates of the program. Uh, but right now it, it might be a bit too much for that printer to handle, but we'll see, we'll see. Give it time, it's a slow, big printer, we'll see. If you guys have any questions about Hueforge, there is a link below to the website. And if you have any questions for us about Hueforge, then we are also really happy to help you. So until next time guys, later.